Hi, I'm Jason. And I'm Vivian. And this is Burger of the Week. Each week we discuss an episode of the Fox animated series Bob's Burgers and we create a themed burger based on the episode. This week we're talking about Season 3, Episode 13, My Fuzzy Valentine. It was written by Dan Feibel and Rich Rinaldi. It was directed by Bu Huan Lim and Kyung Hee Lim. And it aired February 10th, 2013. The store next door this week was Kuka for Hookah. But the first time I saw, actually, literally until I just read that now, I thought it said Hookah for Hookah. And I was like, is it trying to say like Hookah for Hookah? Like, like, like you're such a big slut for Hookah? <laughs> that's what i thought it was and i was wow. like i'm very confused i think i'm tired today i guess it's your kooky for hookahs it's like your cocoa for cocoa puffs kind of thing okay. you know sure all right i get it it's not the best store next door but it's fine it'll work i sort of wish they had gone with like a valentine's day themed mm-hmm. store though yeah that would have been good the exterminator van was Ratso Riddo, which is, I guess, a reference to something, but I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know. And we had one burger of the day this week. I heart a choke you burger, which is cute. What? Oh, I just, I didn't realize that was the burger and I had a heart a choke burger. Uh <laughs> well, that's okay. That's okay. I had so many burgers this week that I can just scrap it. Okay. We had one guest actor this week. We had Gary Cole returning as Sergeant Bosco. He's best known for his work in Office Space, The West Wing, Pineapple Express, and Talladega Nights. He's the guy who's like, mm, I'm going to need you to come in on Saturday from Office Space. It's so, pretty nuts. If you can think of the meme, that's that guy. Mm-hmm. All right, Jason, tell us what this episode is all about. It's Valentine's Day, and Bob tries to woo Linda with a heart-shaped pancake, one of his usual last-minute heart-shaped gifts. The kids convince Bob to let them skip school to help him find the perfect gift. They go looking for a love testometer machine from Bob and Linda's first Valentine's Day together, and they run into Hugo, who knows exactly where to find it, but refuses to help them. Meanwhile, Linda celebrates by hosting a speed dating event at the restaurant. Sergeant Bosco joins and ruins Linda's vision for the event. When Bob is finally in possession of the love testometer, he realizes the memory attached to it doesn't involve Linda at all. Linda snaps at Sergeant Bosco and takes his gun, and Bob presents the gift to a handcuffed Linda who declares this the best Valentine's Day ever. The episode ends with Jimmy Jr. giving Tina a card and Teddy getting a phone number from a lady. Mm Mm-hmm. So, right off the bat, What's the episode title in reference to? My I, Fuzzy Valentine. I think it's a, a reference to My Funny Valentine, which I'm pretty sure is a movie. Okay. What about this episode is fuzzy? Yeah, that's that's something I was going to bring up because there's nothing in is this episode. Is it because of the fuzz and it's Sergeant Bosco? Okay, I could see that, but it's kind of a stretch, right? Right. I think they just went for like a punny title but then the pun didn't really relate to anything in the episode. Mm-hmm. I think the episode so, title is kind of a miss. Yeah, it is. And I would say. Frankly, this whole episode to me is a big miss. Really? I do not like it. Oh, I do. Even though I'm not a fan of Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. Jason, how do you feel about Valentine's Day? I think it's stupid. Why? Tell us. Because... It seems like such a commercial event these days. Okay. And every day should be Valentine's Day. So you should be buying gifts for your significant other every day? When you want to. You shouldn't have to have a day where you feel like you're forced to. Okay. I get it. I get it. I don't know. Sometimes I'd rather give somebody a gift just because I want to give them a gift rather than something that's expected of me even around christmas sometimes i don't want to give someone a gift but like maybe in march i want to give someone a gift Mm. it just feels like an obligation 
So a St. Patrick's Day gift then? Sure. Okay. Something green and funny. Green and funny. Yeah. Clovery. And boozy. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't really care that much for Valentine's Day, mainly because of the culture around it. Mm-hmm. I don't like the idea that you're only supposed to give gifts to the person that you're currently in a relationship with. Um, I don't like the culture of, oh, well, did he get you something really romantic? And if he didn't, then he doesn't love you enough. Yeah, the people saying, oh, what did you do for Valentine's Day? And then if you say nothing, then they're like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Your relationship must be awful. Yeah, it must be terrible. You're like, nope, it's actually fine, but we don't like Valentine's Day. <laughs> I don't know. I grew up celebrating Valentine's Day with my family and my parents getting us gifts, and it was never like a, oh, only my parents exchange gifts. It was always something that we did together as a family, and then when I was in high school and in elementary school, like I would give Valentine's to my friends because I loved them. And I liked putting effort into doing that, but I think there's something about it that's kind of tainted the romantic side of it for me. Right. So I just don't tend to focus on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you remember our first Valentine's? No. <laughs> Am I supposed to? I I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I don't. Well, we had just been dating for a short amount of time, a few months, yeah, probably well, like we four started, months. We started dating in August. Right. So September, October, November, December, January, February. Okay, so six months later. Oh, geez. So it's our, like our six-month anniversary, too. Let's just go right. with that. Jeez. <laughs> Awful. So we had talked about how I had already told you that I don't really care about Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. And you had told me the same. But I didn't know you well enough to believe you. Oh, okay. And I'm always, I'm always with the under the impression that if a girl says she doesn't like Valentine's Day and doesn't want any gifts, then she really does. Mm -hmm. So I did get you something. I got you some chocolates and in like a stupid Valentine, like a heart-shaped box. Something dumb. <laughs> and we were at the mall and I gave it to you at the mall. I'm like, here you go. Happy Valentine's Day. And you were just like so shocked and... <laughs> A little bit like, oh my god, he actually got me something? Oh, shoot. I didn't get him anything, because I didn't... <laughs> I had already told him that we, I didn't like it, so... Yeah. So, that was when I really knew that you were serious, because you actually didn't care. And you're like, I didn't get you anything, because I don't really care about it. And I was like, I don't either, but I thought you did, because you said... And it was really funny. Oh my gosh, yeah. of course. It was great. Oh, man, I so don't remember that. <laughs> because I just don't care about Valentine's exactly. Day. Exactly, and that's why it's fantastic. I don't, yeah, I don't know. It's just the whole romantic aspect of it. It just feels like a lot of pressure, I mm -hmm. guess. And I really hate the idea that, like, the guy is supposed to get the girl something really romantic and and sweep them off their feet. And I'm like, that's not fair. Men want to be swept off their feet, too. Sure. Like, it just, I don't know. It just seems unfair, and I don't really care for it. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of rejected Valentine's Day. <laughs> I'm right there with you. And this episode does not help because Linda spends this whole episode kind of being like a little bit grumbly about Bob's lack of a gift, really. But she's putting no effort. She's not doing anything. She's not doing anything for him. Exactly. Which I don't get. Like, Linda, this is a two-way street. You should be getting something for Bob if you want him to get you something, too. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you can't receive something without giving something for certain holidays, but come on. Yeah. What's going on, Linda? You're a feminist, Linda. Come mm -hmm. on. Believe in equality. I do think I'm going to enjoy Valentine's Day more when uh, I have kids, though. I think because I'm going to have fun doing stuff for them. Like what? Just like little cards for them, like something silly, something that they like from, you know, a TV show or something that they enjoy and mm. getting them little candies or making some sort of like fun treasure hunt or something like that. It would just be cool to do something because my parents kind of did fun little things with us. Okay. So I think it would be nice. 
So Jimmy Jr.'s card to Tina that she gets when she's talking about uh, last year's Valentine's Day card, his card just says it's Valentine's Day with a basketball on it. There's nothing else. There's no pun about basketball. Mm -hmm. There's no like, oh, you're a slam dunk, Valentine. It's just that. I'm like, wow, did you make this on your computer and then print it off? Because it's bad. When I was in school, we, yeah, we definitely handed out cards. But more so when I was younger, like, Mm -hmm. I don't know, kindergarten to grade six. Okay. Maybe even grade five. And so not still doing it in, like, grade eight? No. Okay. Definitely not. You're kind of a, a loser if you did that. Oh. Okay. But I'm, I'm under I the impression... I didn't do it till grade 12. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's fine. I was under the impression that these days you have to get a card for everybody in your class. So everybody got one. Mm-hmm. But when I was a kid, you definitely did not have to get everybody a, a Valentine's Day card. Mm. It was, some people would go without one. Oh, that's so sad. Like Is in it? Simpsons, when Ralph doesn't get a Valentine's Day card, mm-hmm. that moment is heartbreaking. Right, and that wouldn't happen these days. Hmm. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's almost like a participant trophy. It's like everybody gets one. Yeah, but when kids are that young, they don't need to learn about the crushing disappointment of reality, okay? Not on Valentine's Day when they're all just trying to get candy and, like, that kind of thing. But, I don't know. I I think there's no point in softening the blow that you gotta... Reality sucks sometimes. Yeah, but what if you're... Not everyone's gonna like you. No, and that's fine. That's when you get the frums. (laughs) <laughs> you know, and then the people who really like you get the, you know, love, whatever, or they get some sort of funny message or you give like the cards in the pack that aren't the best mm-hmm. to the people that you don't really care that much about. But I remember having to give cards to pretty much everybody in the class. Like that was kind of the rule. And so that's what I did. You know, it was like a sign off of like really quickly. No big thing. Just writing the name to and mm-hmm. from and that's it. But the people that I liked got, you know, love something. Did you they got like a little over what to write. No, like, no, not not really. Love V or from V or kisses or no, no, not really. Oh, no, I, I would did. just agonize over whether or not to give them to the person I had a crush on mm-hmm. and what to write for them. But everybody else was like pretty easy. Mm-hmm. I actually still have a, uh, a Valentine's Day envelope. That we used to, that we made during uh, Valentine's Day, like crafts in elementary school. I don't know, grade three or four or something. Oh, yeah. For everyone to put the, their cards in. Yeah. I still actually have that with a bunch of Valentines in it. Man, holidays are like the best thing for teachers. They're just like, sweet, art class? Okay, let's make a little Valentine's Day box. Mm-hmm. Done. Mother's Day? Cool, let's write a Mother's Day card in English. Thanksgiving? All right, let's do some turkeys. Yeah, let's make a turkey with a paper bag. Or, that's or what I did this hand. year. Yeah. Oh, turkey hand. Yeah. That's true. So, yeah, I, I kind of get Tina's sadness over the from. You know, it's it's impersonal. There's no love there. Mm-hmm. As she says, no one says, I from you. Yeah. Right? But... If we think back to last year, Jimmy Jr. wasn't that into her, so it makes sense. You never can tell with Jimmy Jr. Yeah, he's so hot and cold. Mm -hmm. He's a Katy Perry song. So (sighs) I want to talk about the weather this episode. Hmm, okay. Because it doesn't impact the story whatsoever, but it's still obvious. It's raining for the first half of the episode. And then it slows down later on, and then at the end it's stopped completely. And that's it. It's, it just seemed like such a very obvious choice to have a rainy Valentine's Day. Mm. And I'm wondering if you have any thoughts about why they would choose to do that. Well, I think it kind of reflects the mood of everybody in this episode. Mm-hmm. Like, no one is feeling particularly happy. Mm-hmm. Bob is the only one who feels, like, sort of accomplished, Until his kids give him a reality check and say, no, your last minute heart-shaped nothings suck. 
mm-hmm. and mom deserves better. So I think it's kind a, of that. She's a keeper. Yeah, she's a keeper, right? I mean, she's okay. <laughs> so I think it's kind of reflecting that mood. Like, Tina's not in a great mood. Linda's not in a great mood. You know, more Teddy. They're not great either. It's mm-hmm. kind of a depressing Valentine's Day. And then towards the end of the episode, when things are starting to ramp up, things are getting a little bit better. And then right at the end of the episode, you the rain the... has stopped completely. Yeah. And we have a big rainbow in right. the sky. I think because, you know, the day is finally getting better kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And also finding the bright side, I guess, because that's what Linda's doing. Like, realizing that Bob went all over town, spent way too much money on something that's pretty pointless. Yeah. And is never going to show up in any other episode. Like, why wouldn't nope. you just put it in the restaurant as like a little thing? Anyway, they don't. Which is odd. And then Linda decides to still think that's like a super romantic gesture. I don't know. Finding the bright side. I can see it. Yeah. It is interesting though. Generally in animated shows, if the weather is bad for whatever reason, it's going to feed directly into the story. Yeah. And this episode, it doesn't. Yeah. You're right. They have a few jokes about it. Like, oh, it's crappy weather. Let's get some hot chocolate or something. But Mm -hmm. like... It doesn't directly impact, so I just thought it was interesting. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on it? No, I think you pretty much nailed what I was thinking about it. Okay. So when they're in the car, they have this little jingle that is one of my favorites. The whole... You definitely sing it. Buckle it up or you'll die. Oh, man. I love that jingle. (laughs) And I love that all the kids sing it, like, along with Bob, because... It's obvious that they've sung up multiple times. Oh, yeah. They probably do it every time they get in the car. Yeah. I can imagine Bob teaching that to them when they're very young and them (laughs) growing up with it, which is really sweet, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, buckle it up or you'll die is a little bit scary, I guess. It's a good message. But, you know, it is a good message. You'll remember it if you have a little song about it. Definitely. I'm going to teach our kids that song. You know I'm going to do it. Yep. So the montage of Bob's heart-shaped gifts, to me, just get worse and worse. Okay? Like, the the heart-shaped pancake that we see in the morning, it's it's lame. It's I mean, of, but it's, it's, it's kind cute. of cute. Yeah. It's kind of cute. It's like, oh, okay, you thought to do something a little bit different today. But then we see a heart-shaped burger. So obviously last year he had just the same idea. And he's giving her a burger, which she probably eats, like, almost every day. Mm-hmm. Boring. But then we have him leaving her a shape in the foggy bathroom mirror, Mm -hmm. which is literally nothing. I'm like, that's not a gift in any way. It doesn't show any form of planning. No. And it's not even a thing. She can't eat it. She can't look at it for longer than a few seconds because it's going to get foggy again. Like, Mm -hmm. what is that? That's not cute. It's just stupid. And then... And then we get a pile of dirty laundry shaped like a heart. Like, eh? Eh? No! no. Bob, how about you do the laundry? Maybe she'll appreciate that. <laughs> oh yeah, my gosh. Do some housework and there. Yeah. So if I was Linda, I think I would be annoyed. Not because I have an expectation, but I'd just be like, okay, but stop with the heart shaped stuff. That's nothing. And also pick. The laundry up and do it or I'm going to kick you in the butt. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it's not going to be romantic. I feel like this is a trope that a lot of cartoons or a lot of TV shows do is where the husband is supposed to get their their significant other a gift of some sort and they fail at it. They give them a terrible gift Mm -hmm. and they don't realize it year after year. There's a great episode of the simpsons where homer buys marge a bowling ball for her birthday oh my gosh i remember that episode yeah and because he knows that she's never going to use it so he really bought it for himself yeah it is definitely a trope and i see where it comes from i yeah, know reality that, oh yeah definitely reality <laughs> yeah because my dad has had a few misses in his day of just gifts that my mom was like Why did you buy this for me? What were you thinking? Or why are you always buying this for me? Like, I don't need this many of this certain item. Mm -hmm. My mom 
continuously got, um, like, stuff from the body shop, like, bath lotions and whatever, that kind of stuff. That's, like, a go-to when you don't know what to get somebody. Yeah. My dad would buy those for her, and then she would just stack them in the bathroom because she couldn't possibly use them that quickly. (laughs) And then she told everybody, you need to stop buying me this stuff. I don't want it. I will give it back to you. And so we did. We just stopped, which is good. Because I'm pretty sure she still has some, and we haven't bought any for, like, the last five years. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But, yeah, I don't know. This episode doesn't feel as bad. It's not like Bob is buying her something that he really wants, like Homer buying the bowling ball. And it's not like, oh, he keeps buying me these things, and I don't even like them, so it's a waste of money. It's just... He's really not putting any thought into it. He's just doing something heart-shaped, whatever that happens to be. Mm -hmm. Whatever's nearby. Yeah. Yeah. And then we get Linda's song, which is cute, but also not very romantic. Yeah, it's more... Does it reflect how she feels about their relationship? I think so. Security in life. Mm -hmm. Nothing about loving the person. Nope. And it's it's just very sad. Like, yeah, like security in life and someone to love you instead of being all alone. Yeah. It's pretty sad. I mean, that's not a good sounding relationship, I have to say. Yeah. There should be more to it than that. But to be fair, she's talking to two guys who are not in love. And she just had kind of a disappointing Valentine's Day morning. And if you're someone who cares about a holiday like this, then that's Mm -hmm. sad, right? Yeah. I like that the kids are able to convince Bob to bring them to the mall. It's fantastic. I love that. It's great. And the stores at the mall are consistent. Last time we were there was in Season 2, Episode 8, Bad Tina. Right, where she tries to shop... Well, Tammy tries to shoplift the lip chop. Yes, And I think the only new store that we get is the Visor Advisor. (laughs) Because we see the heterosexual store. Yeah, we do. Yeah. And we see the cookie lady one. And Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, of course, we have the for goodness sakes, keepsakes, where the Grazielda figures are. Oh, my goodness. Okay. What even? Those things are ridiculous. I would never spend that much money on anything like that. Mm -hmm. They're collectibles. No. No collectible trash i'm sorry but i don't think you or your wife are very serious about grazieldas no we're not who would be (laughs) and i love that the guy just like starts listing people off Mm -hmm. that's great the uh salesman and later the bartender who thinks bob's hitting on him are voiced by david herman okay who voices mr fron and marshmallow and he does a great job yeah he's he's so funny So now Bob's second idea for Linda's Valentine's Day gift is a phone case that looks like it's built for an iPhone that says Got Milf on it. And he's like, yeah, your mom would like this, right? (laughs) You should not be asking your kids that. What? What? No, like, what is he thinking? What is actually going on in his head? I just don't understand. It's like he couldn't, he could have picked up anything and it probably would have been better than that. Yeah. Because as far as I know, we have never seen Linda carry a smartphone. No, it's always been a flip phone. Yeah, it's like a flip phone they use for emergencies. It's not even a regular day use kind of thing. So what is she going to do with a phone case for a phone she doesn't have? Exactly. Oh, man. It's just... It just shows how little Bob is thinking. Oh, my gosh. But it's so bad, it's funny. Yeah. (laughs) He doesn't even seem panicked. He just seems sort of like, can I get a gift and get out of here? But what? (laughs) I don't don't know. But what? I just, I was so confused at this moment. I'm like, what is your plan here, Bob? Really? He has no game plan. None at all. So Linda, Linda is doing speed dating. Yes. Fast food and fast love at Bob's Burgers. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Have you ever gone speed dating? No. Would you have ever gone speed dating? I know that we are currently dating, so it would be weird if you did that now. Yeah. Um, 
I think I would. Okay. I think it sounds intriguing. All right. But I don't like the way that Linda's doing it. <laughs> Why? The speed because, hand holding's not yeah, your thing? Yeah, <laughs> basically she's like instructing everybody. Like, you need to talk about this. You should talk about this. And I mean, it's, it makes sense to have like topics that you could discuss to help you out if you're having trouble. Maybe like on the board or something. And there's like a list of possible discussion topics. But you literally have 60 seconds. So... And speed dating with six people in the room is going to be a little bit quick, don't you think? If we're assuming that everyone is straight here, which they appear to be. But we do see two guys match together for the foot rubbing. For the foot rubbing and Mort points out there's not enough ladies here. Yes. Right? So if we're to assume that... Teddy has no interest in, you know, Mort or the mailman. Mm -hmm. Then this is going to go by in like three minutes. This is going to be real quick. That's that's fair. But we do see, you know, we do see different couplings and we do see different activities for the couplings. So maybe it's just 60 minute intervals of, or 60 seconds. I'm sorry. 60 minutes would be hard. Yeah. It, uh... It would still go by pretty quickly. But I see Linda's doing different things. She's like, okay, talk about this. And now do speed hand-holding for a minute, I'm guessing. So what do you do? do Why you just, would you like, hold hands for a minute? What does that have to do with compatibility? So that you feel physically connected? So you can see if you feel a spark when you touch their hands? So I've never done speed dating. And I don't think I would have ever done it because it sounds awful. Really? Yeah, I don't like the pressure of finding something to say that's going to make you stand out in 60 seconds. Oh, see, for me, it's the opposite. There's no pressure in it. Oh. Because you have 60 seconds, so one can only reasonably put out so much information in 60 seconds, so why try and overdo it? Just relax and chat about a few things, and if you don't work out, then, I mean... There's a whole bunch of other people in the room, so you get another chance to meet other people. So if you don't immediately feel that connection, whatever, no sweat. I guess that's true. I think that I would get nervous if the person sitting across from me was attractive and kind and all these things. And I was thinking, oh, am I coming off that way? Like, what if I'm not interesting enough and they're not interested in me? And then... Yeah, I, hmm. I don't know. I'm too panicky for these things. <laughs> <laughs> too much pressure. It's just too much pressure. I, I'd be like Teddy. Teddy's like, what do I talk about? What do I say? That's mm-hmm. me. That's literally me, except it's all going on internally. Right. Now, the speed dating becomes something very different, of course, when Sergeant Bosco gets there. Mm-hmm. And, I mean... Do you think he has the right idea? No. No, I don't think so. Telling somebody you're worse, and then hopefully they'll, if they can get past that, then you're definitely compatible. I mean, I guess you'll find out if your future date person, uh, (laughs) you know, your future boyfriend or girlfriend is okay with you being a little bit sketchy. Uh, No, I don't think it's great. I guess just because the stuff that they come up with is, like, really bad. Like, he says something that's super illegal, and he's a cop. He's talking about hunting men, and then Gretchen's talking about stalking somebody and hitting someone with a car. Like Gretchen seems like she's hit a few people with a car. Yeah, and, like, she's definitely, like, a jealous person. Yeah, she likes her stalking. Yeah, it's not just, oh... There have been days where I didn't leave the house and I ate a whole bag of Cheetos. Like, yeah, none it, of that. No. That's it's weak sauce compared to what they've done. Yeah. it. No, it's not a good idea, I don't think. Mm-mm. 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 I mean, it would stink to find out after, like, five years that your significant other goes around hunting people, but... <laughs> I'm suddenly intrigued. Yeah. You're, you're intrigued now mm-hmm. by Sergeant Bosco? Where does this happen? 
Oh, is there okay. a license for it? Do you get membership cards? Do you get like a stamp card? There's no way there's a license for it. You don't get a license to kill. This isn't James Bond. All right, fair enough. <laughs> Do those things exist? Mm, 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 mm. No. <laughs> the world could be a dark place. Never know. Ah. Uh... So we get Teddy and Mort's confessions, and they're just kind of sad, which is, I guess, good, because if they had said something like, oh, I hunt men or I stalk people, it would have been really hard to just forget that and let go of it. Yeah, like later on in the show, and you're thinking, oh, wow, Teddy kills people. Yeah, no, it's just, okay, Teddy dresses up as Santa every night, which is weird. It's definitely weird. It's quirky. Yeah. But you know what? Whatever helps you sleep, bud. Some people take NyQuil. Some people take sleeping pills. Some people listen to whale noises. You dress like a Santa. Santa Claus? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's cozy. Do you have a beard? Does your significant other have to dress like an elf? Oh. Now we're getting into, or Mrs. Like, Claus? kink oh. territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm thinking it's not kinky. I'm thinking it's just a sad thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I like Mort's. It's just, there's hardwood under this carpet. Which we all know. <laughs> we all do. I'm sorry, Mort. It's not a very good weave. No. <laughs> it's not a weave. It's I know, a toupee. It's a toupee, but <laughs> I thought it'd be funny to call it a weave. Oh my goodness. And also, I forgot the name for toupee suddenly. <laughs> you just had like a blank moment. Yeah. I get it. So then Bob is looking for the love testometer, which is... Kind of a fun love mission in this episode. And we get the list of restaurants on Hugo and Ron's list, I guess. And their we schedule. Have, their yeah, schedule their schedule. For sanitizing workplaces. Mm-hmm. And we have falafel on a waffle, mm-hmm. which we have seen before in the show. Yep. We have Slappy's Pizza. Which makes no sense. Do they just slap you with a slice of pizza? No, it was created by a guy the, named Slappy. The owner is Joe Slappy. Face. Oh, and he smacks you in the face when you come in? Sure. Okay. He's got to have a brand, Jason, is all I'm saying. We should be his PR people. Yeah, because he needs a new brand. Yeah. And if he's not going to slap people, then call yourself not Slappy Pizza. I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> the sli- <laughs> it's pizza that doesn't slap you in the face when it comes to you. <laughs> then we have Drinker's Cove. Scent of India, the poop deck, which is just an awful name. What? What is that place? I'm guessing it's like a marina type of thing. It's got to be a marine seafood. bar, maybe. It must be seafood. Okay. Okay, but it's just terrible. Yeah. Don't ever include any kind of feces reference in your restaurant name. Pickles. Of course, pickles is great. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that's where Linda went to see dinner theater. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and I love his visit to Pickles. Um, and then Drink Dynasty, of course, mm-hmm. which is the place that actually has the love testometer. So Bob's visit to Pickles and his visit to the man outside whatever restaurant it is with the dumpster. I love that all these men think that Bob is hitting on him today. Yeah. He's giving off those real buy vibes, you know? Mm-hmm. So they're like, oh, yeah. Daddy over here is hitting on me. I got your love testometer right here. So Mac. <laughs> Guy used to work at Slappy's Pizza. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Uh, goes in <laughs> Tina's <laughs> butt bank. Oh, my God. Oh, terrible. He's way too old for you, honey. Mm-mm. I like the, uh, the, the posters on the front of Pickles. It's like a fireman with a fire hose. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. And it just makes me think of Linda saying, oh, yeah, they have really good pickles. Like, what? <laughs> okay, and they just serve them? That's their specialty. Uh, yeah. I don't want to know what kind of pickle. I'm just saying. All pickles are gross. We've talked about your hatred of pickles before. Have we? Okay. And how wrong you are. Um, I think I'm the right one. I think yeah, everybody else is you always say crazy. their cucumber's gone bad. Yeah. But you're wrong. Okay. So then we find out that Bob's memory was actually with a woman named Barbara Bunkley. That's the worst name ever. She sounds like a truck. (laughs) Truck? Sure. She just sounds like a big Mack truck. (laughs) Okay. 
Not a truck driver, just a truck. Just a truck. A vehicle. Okay. Yeah. She also looks terrible. Yeah. She looks super uninterested she in the like date. She looks like a valley girl. Yeah. It's so weird to think of Bob dating anyone else, though. I think it was an accident. They yeah. must have accidentally gone on this date. She thought he was someone else or something. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's only ever been Linda, in my mind. Mm-hmm. But that moment, like, I love this episode. But the problem is that you can never recreate the first watch of this episode because you know what's going to happen. You know the entire time that Bob is wrong and he's misremembering this date. And it's really sad. It is, but I can totally relate. Yeah? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I can think of times where I've thought about this one time with this one girlfriend and then thinking, oh, wait, that was actually with this other girl. Oh, because you've had so many girlfriends, Jason. I've had It's three, hard to keep track. Three, including <laughs> you. So, <laughs> it's just, I can I can see if it's been such a long time that you mix up mm-hmm. events. Yeah, I but guess so. That's, it is kind of sad. It is sad, but at the same time, I guess kind of cute because he looks back and all he sees is Linda. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess it depends on your perspective. What do you think of Bob's adventure today? Do you agree with Linda and think it's really romantic? Do you think it's not romantic? Where do you land? I think it's romantic. Yeah? He goes through all this work just to give her a nice little gift that brings back the memories of the first time they had a Valentine's Day. So I think it's a great gesture. It just bombs miserably. It's definitely a thought that counts kind of gift. Right. Right? And I think it's super obvious where this whole reveal was going when he tells her the story and she's like are you telling me you did all this and you took the kids out of school blah 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 and then obviously she's gonna say this is the most romantic thing ever i just i don't like it because it's way too obvious Mm. you can see yeah the setup is you can see it coming a mile away right i don't know and you know linda's gonna think it's cute because the episode's not gonna end with linda saying you're the worst and i hate you right you're sleeping on the couch tonight Yeah. Things are going to be fine. I think it's... There's an element of romance there. I think that I would probably just have a regular conversation with Bob and be like, all right, Valentine's Day is important to me. I would like it if you put more effort into it. Done. Hey! Problem solved. Communication saves the day. What a surprise. That's how relationships work. Yep. (laughs) In fact, that's how life works. Yeah. Seriously. I like how much Teddy loves Bob and Linda. It's so cute. When Linda says, oh, that's so romantic, Teddy actually says, aw, and then puts his hand over his heart, and he's like, he's just so in love with the two of them and their relationship. I mean, he ships it, like, super hard. Oh, yeah. I just love it. I think it's very cute how much he loves them. Meanwhile, Hugo hates them. Yeah, he's... He's the worst. He's just so spiteful mm-hmm. in this episode. And Vindictive. Like, Hugo, you haven't dated Linda in like 13, 14, whatever years. Mm-hmm. How long were Bob and Linda together before they had Tina? I don't know. But it was at least 13 years ago. Yeah. Since that's how old she is. It's been a long time, Hugo. Get over it. Yeah. Literally get over it. And, I mean, you have Ron there, so... And Ron is clearly in love with you, so just make that work. Life partners. Yeah. Life and health partners, okay? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In life and in health inspections. Speaking of, did you keep note of those sex positions that were brought up? I certainly did. And I may have also Googled to see if any of them were anything... Real. So we got to clear that search history or else Google's going to think we're weird, right? Yeah. I definitely (laughs) searched fried green tomato sex position. Okay. So do you want to tell us the sex positions? There was the fried green tomato, the pick and roll, the broken sprinkler, chitty chitty bang bang, and the sticky wicket. Okay. I I feel like if I were to guess right now which are legit, I would say the sticky wicket. (laughs) <laughs> and, I know. And maybe the pick and roll. Mm. Okay, so I looked them up, and there is actually 
a weird sex position that was put into a magazine called the sexy sprinkler position. And it said in the article that you should do this when you have time alone to be frisky in your backyard. So are you telling me the sticky wicket isn't a, a real position? No, apparently not, according to the internet. Well, which that's is good. unfortunate. But the pick and roll, mm-hmm. it is not a sex position, but it is a common basketball move. Right. Okay? So a player is supposed to protect the ball handler from the other team's defender so they can get an open shot on the net. So I choose to believe that Gretchen's favorite sex positions or sex position needs three people. Mm, okay. Gretchen's a freak. I'm into it. It's fine. She's put on all that <laughs> weight after a nude beach episode. She has, yeah. yeah. It's a tough life being Gretchen. Nah, you know, it happens. Yo-yo dieting. So we finish our episode uh, with the card from Jimmy Jr. And I think it was kind of sweet. It's a little bit of a point in his favor, I think. Bringing her the Valentine's Day card, despite the fact she didn't show up at school and Mm -hmm. bringing her homework. That shows he's thinking about her. Yeah, exactly. When she's not there. Yeah, so it is sweet. It is nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, he didn't write love. He did write heart. And then he got all weird the second she tried to, like, talk to him about it. But it's forward momentum for him. Yeah. So. And then when Teddy gets the phone number from that lady, I was like, oh, you might want to make sure she goes to a doctor before you get intimate with her. Ten years having yeast infection. I don't think that's healthy. No. No, girl, that has to suck so jason overall you said you were not a fan of this episode why i don't know i just talking about it helps okay because i do like the kids going on an adventure with bob that's fun Mm -hmm. i guess i don't i don't like the speed dating okay and i don't like the whole linda reaching for the gun and getting handcuffed it just it doesn't go anywhere it literally has no purpose no, it doesn't. It just shows her getting frustrated, so frustrated that she does something rash, which doesn't lead to anything. No, because Louise gets her out of it, yeah. 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 I don't know. I I think it was maybe putting them, like her and Bob, on an e- more even playing field. Like, she messed up, he messed up kind of thing. Okay. So they're both coming from the same level okay. when they talk to each other. But you're right. Like, it doesn't go anywhere. There's no consequence for her actions. I like Louise's reaction when she finds out that her mom did that. That's great. Yeah, being like, mom's a badass now. Yeah, she got some respect points from Louise. Yeah, for sure. I don't know. It's it's just, I don't like Valentine's Day. I don't like the the side plot. Um, I think the ending is silly. Yeah, I, I don't know. Okay. There's, like, one thing that I like and three or four that I don't, so Mm. negatives outweigh the positives for me. Okay. That's fair. I like it. You like it. I enjoy it. I think it's cute. Um, I like both the stories. I think they're funny and they're silly. It's definitely not, like, a top ten episode, but Mm. it's still solid. Yeah. Okay. And I I mean, come on. It has the buckle it up or you'll die song, right? of course. I have to like this episode. (laughs) All right, so how many burgers did you come up with? Two. I came up with two as well. Excellent. And you have a winning burger. Apparently, yes. Yeah, I I might have told Jason earlier that I have the winning burger, so he should just not even bother. But I couldn't help it. My brain was just so fantabulous that it just came up with a few on Mm -hmm. its own. I told it not to. Your brain was braining real hard today. Yeah. Just not earlier. Just not earlier. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. All right. So why don't you tell me your worst burger? Oh, my worst one. Okay. Do you have a liverwurst burger? No, I do not. No. No, my God. (laughs) All right. My second burger is the bee wine burger, (laughs) which is just marinated in red wine. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's cute. Linda would love it. (laughs) She really would. Absolutely. Ten points for that one. 10 Linda points, 10. All right. All right. <laughs> I, I noticed this episode. I love the way John Roberts, who plays Linda, says, pronounces the word weren't. 
he weren't yeah like you weren't supposed to go there or oh. you yeah that's a word okay uh yeah he pronounces it weren't with the accent like because because oh. the accent is so thick that it's like weren't oh, like he pronounces every letter of it and it's, it's really great i just noticed it this episode and i'm not sure why hmm. but it was it was an interesting I don't, yeah, that's, I don't know. that's an odd yeah, word to pick out. It's really weird. It's not like the way she pronounces coffee. No. You know, she's like coffee. No, it's just weren't. Weren't. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so tell me your first burger. Um, My first burger is romantic gesture. What? <laughs> romantic? Like what? There's going to be romaine lettuce on the burger? Yes, oh my God, that's so, so bad. bad. <laughs> that's so bad. I know it's really bad. Does, he puts it on every burger. No, it's probably iceberg. Oh my gosh. Okay, fine. <laughs> oh, terrible. Okay, it'll be a big romantic gesture. <laughs> so it's a big leaf oh, of romaine. Just like a really big leaf. Okay. Sure, it's like over because the everybody edges. loves when there's like a lot of lettuce. Right. On your burger, exactly. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say they were good. <laughs> okay. All right. My. And I'm pretty sure this one's going to win. All right. Is the Together for Cheddar <laughs> burger. Oh, my God. It would be a heart-shaped patty with four types of cheddar cheese. Are there four types? I thought cheddar was the only cheddar no, but type. but, like, cheddar, like, like, mild, and then also old, and then... Oh, and then you could have, like, the flavored cheddars. Yeah. So Flavored four, cheddar? Yeah. Like what? Just like the one that you bought me the other week. Um, oh, the apple smoked, smoked bacon. Yeah. Or apple smoked cheddar. Not bacon. Definitely right. not. Apple smoked but cheddar. Okay. See? Like different kinds yeah, of cheddar. Okay. okay. I like it. And I'm going with the heart-shaped theme. Heart-shaped patty too. Did you say together for cheddar? Yeah. Together for cheddar. Like not together forever. To cheddar forever? No. Just like Linda's song. Together okay. forever. Except together for cheddar. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's pretty yeah. good. See, it's pretty good, right? <laughs> okay, you go. Tell me yours. Tell me yours. I, I hope it's I better always... than romantic. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget how to pronounce this. Give me a second. Oh, yeah, it's an artichoke burger, isn't it? No, it was oh, going to be, but then I okay, scrapped it. Okay, okay. I want to know that one. From the bottom of my heart, a joke. Aw, that's cute. Yeah. It was gonna was it gonna be the bottom of artichokes on the burger? Sure, why not? <laughs> You're like no. So my second burger is Doctor Loves Love Test Tomato. So it has a tomato on it? No 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 back up back up back up back up. Doctor Loves Love Test Tomato, and instead of a bun, it's uh, the top part of a tomato and a bottom part of a tomato. Oh my god! And it's got sun dried tomatoes on it, so it's like tomato burger. Ew! People do that. I looked it up, and apparently that is like a super healthy choice because there's no bread, and that's a lot of calories. Yeah. So you have the top part of a tomato is the top part of the bun. I know I'm gagging as well Gross. because I hate tomatoes. No. But the point is to make a burger. That has the name, and I'm not going to eat this burger. That's true. So, Doctor Loves <laughs> Love Tomatometer, or like Testoma. Test Tomato. <laughs> oh my god, that's so bad. I know. It's that's pretty bad. So bad. It was a tough one this week for Jason. Oh, honey. Yeah. 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 I mean, can we just go with mine? Let's rock paper scissors. Let's go <laughs> for it. Yep. Let's go. We are not rock paper scissoring Get over ready. your romantic you're, you're and worried, test tomato. You're worried you're gonna lose. Let's go. Oh my god. Let's do it. Oh, okay. One, two, three. Huh. Oh no! I was and gonna I... give it to you anyway. Don't oh, worry. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, you didn't have to because I won anyway. I cut. You, uh, I cut that piece of. Yeah, paper. but I was gonna give it to you anyway. I th- no. No, you weren't. You were gonna like make a whole fuss about it because that's just signature, Jason. So that will bring us to the end of Burger of the Week, a Multiverse Radio production. Thank you so much for listening. The best way to spread the word or show your support is by leaving us a rating and a review on iTunes. If you want to discuss awkward speed dating encounters and terrible Valentine's Day gifts, 
You can find us on Twitter at Multiverse Radio or Facebook at Multiverse Radio Podcast. And you can always send us an email from our website, multiverseradio.ca. Next week, we'll discuss Season 3, Episode 14, Lindependent Woman. This is a really good episode. So good. Guys, you're going to want to watch it like five times. At least. Yeah. And then listen to the song five more times on the Bob's Burgers album. Yeah. Because it's really good, guys. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Oh my god, this is an hour. <laughs> As if we've been talking that long. <laughs> okay. I gotta go to bed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We had one guest actor this week. We had Gary Coleman returning as Sergeant Bosco. Not Coleman. It's Cole. <laughs> okay. He's not a short black guy. No. Okay. I just felt a spark, Jason. I did not feel a spark. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I love, love you. Is <laughs> but love is dead. But your hand's just warm. That's mostly what I felt. Mm. I mean, it's a nice hand. It's very soft. Much softer than mine. It's like you... you I was going to say you moisten. <laughs> you lotion. <laughs> I moisten. <laughs> You're like Oz. Your sarcastic voice is your regular voice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes my brain just turns off. Mm. It forgets it's supposed to be doing things. It's, it's supposed to be braining, but it's not braining. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. It's braining, man. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs>